and welcome back to Nods by Lainey. I'm Lainey and today we'll be making a pillowcase. Okay, so here we have my first panel. So you get a sneak peek. Um, I am just made a template so I knew what dimensions to make this already. Um, I have a 17 by 17 inch pillow. I think it was larger, but it's old. So we're making it to the dimensions it is now. Um, so I made this square already. I made up a template with my gauge. So this was, I think, 37 rows of light purple, then four rows of each of our colors, then another 16 rows of light purple. I do have a ball attached to this still in case we need one or two more rows, um, but we'll see how it goes. First things first, let's make this big purple chunk. Um, this pillowcase is complete. This pillowcase is completely made up of single crochet. So I do have a video on my channel showing you how to single crochet. I'll link that below, just in case you need a refresher. Um, and yeah, let's let's jump into it. Okay, I just wanted to let you guys know that I'm using Big Twist acrylic value yarn for this project. Um, I have it in balls because I tore up a different project I was making. Um, and I'm probably just going to watch yarn dyeing videos while I make this project because I have been obsessed with dyeing yarn. So if you guys want to watch me try and dye my first set of yarn, let me know down below and I'll make a video out of that. I've already ordered dye and yarn so just let me know if you guys want to see that or not um all right so i'm just gonna make my little slip knot and chain 60 and then we're going to just single crochet for i believe it's 37 rows all right <laughs> have my chain of 60 here and now we are just going to single crochet all the way down the chain and back for 37 rows. I would also like to point out that I do not chain one to go back and forth between single crochet. I like the straighter line um, that that gives. You are more than welcome to chain one if that's what you're comfortable with. It's just personal preference.
right, so we're on our last row, and I'm going to do the last row of single crochet in this light purple, and then I will show you how we change colors to our green. Alright, so now we're coming to our last stitch of our 37th row, and I am going to just start the stitch like normal by inserting my hook and pulling up a loop. Now, instead of finishing it like normal, and then cutting it and restarting with a new color, I like to just finish this stitch with the color I would like the next row to begin with. So. To do that, we're now going to take, with our loop on our hook, our two loops on our hook, we're going to take our tail, we're just going to drape it over, pinch it, and pull it through those two loops. And we're going to take our tail from our purple and we're going to tug it a little bit to tighten up that stitch. And then here's where you need to decide where's the front and where's the back uh, like what's the good side of your piece. So for me, I like to have the tail be on the left side of my front, which means that this row that we're about to start on will be the back. That only matters because that's where we're going to be tucking in our, working in our tails. So we're gonna pull this tight again. We're gonna go underneath both of those tails and through that last stitch we just made, pull up that green loop and work it like normal. Then we're gonna tug on these, get them good and tight. And we're going to continue to work like normal just with these two tails underneath our yarn, working them in. Now you could leave these out and sew them in at the end. I just know that with the amount of wear these pillows this pillow is going to get these aren't going to really work their way out and it's going to be secure so i'm going to do one or two more stitches yep let's do one more and then i'm going to drop the yarn so that those tails i'm going to not carry throughout anymore i'm going to put a few more stitches in I'm gonna pause for a second hit the camera sorry guys and <laughs> now I'm gonna just go snippet a snippet pull them tight and cut as close to the stitch as possible without cutting your stitch tug the fabric a little bit and look at that it disappears and it's not on the other side either now I'm gonna do four rows of this sage green color then four what rows of aqua four rows of sky blue, and then four rows of my darker purple color. And then we're gonna work our way back to the light purple. to do our next color change so we're going to insert our hook into this last stitch pull up a loop drape our new color over our hook and pull it through give everything a nice little tug turn our work and we are just going to work these ends in again just like we did last time Keep bumping you, I'm sorry. I'm not quite used to the tripod's new location. <laughs> right, snip it a snip. We can put the screen away. We don't need it again. I'm just gonna set it back behind everything. And then do four rows of aqua.
All right, so we finished our stripes. Now we are going to do our 16 rows of light purple. So we're just gonna switch out the yarn like we have been doing. I'm not really gonna go back over this. If you need a recap, just rewind the video a little bit. And I'm gonna do most of this purple off camera since it is just, you know, rows and rows is the same single crochet. All right, so last night I decided to finish both of the squares. I added one more row at the top, so this chunk of purple was actually 17 rows instead of 16. And I added that to this square and this one. Um, I'm going to actually weave in my little ends now just so that way I don't have to deal with them when I go to sew it together but I have them right sides together right now and I'm basically going to whip stitch all the way around like that. I have a 12 inch zipper that I'm going to hand sew in at the bottom here. So I will have to whip stitch about two inches on each side of this zipper just to, you know, get it to fit properly. But I'm gonna do these three. So let's weave these in and I will be right back. So now I'm going to take, I don't know, like twice, three times the length of the border I'm cutting. It still might not be enough, I just kind of guess, and I'll tie a knot in it if it isn't. And we are just going to, I'm actually going to pin this first in place. So I'm just going to take it and put it through the corner of both pillowcases on both of these ends. I'm going to place a pin where this first green stitch will meet this first green stitch. And then in the last purple stitch, matching that up with the last dark purple stitch on the other side, like that. I'm gonna do this corner. I'm gonna do the same thing we did on the other side, one, two, and three. And if you would like to test it out, you could put one pin here and insert your pillow and make sure that it's good. I'm going to just trust that I math correctly um, and just go for it. And now I'm going to just pick a side to start on. So I think I'm going to start here and go like this. And I'm not worrying about the little bit that I need to whip stitch for the zipper yet. I want to do the border and then I'll worry about placing that zipper in. So first things first, I'm going to insert my needle through this corner stitch that I put my stitch marker in. I'm going to pull my yarn through it until the tail is out here. And then I'm going to take this stitch marker out. So we have some more wiggle room. And then I'm going to just tie this into a little bit of a knot to secure it in place.
There's other ways you can secure your working yarn. I just think that this is the most effective way to make sure that nothing's going to fall out of place while we're stitching. All right. Let's make sure you can see what I'm doing. All right, now a whip stitch is literally just pulling it through one side and back out the other. And then just pull all of this yarn all the way through there. And then we're just gonna take it, we're gonna go back over to that first side and pull it through both sides again. Here's my inside out pillowcase cover and my 12 inch zipper. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I have a sewing machine. I've never sewed onto my crochet ship before and today's not the day for that. I also though, have very, very ever rarely hand sewed. So this could be a disaster and it could end up with me ripping the zipper out completely and just putting the pillow in there and slips, whip stitching the thing closed. So if at the end of this video, there is no zipper, don't talk about it. Just don't talk about it. <laughs> in the meantime, we're going to try and put the zipper in. So I'm going to measure from this little stopper point to this stopper how much on each side needs to get sewn up and then I'm going to pin this in place and we are going to do a very shallow straight stitch from this end all the way down across this back and then all the way up. I've never done this before. Okay? Okay. Let's try it. <laughs> Okay, so it's still inside out, so the right side's in, and I'm going to just take this and pin it so the teeth are barely on the other side of the fabric, or yarn. I am going to open it up just to help me place this side. Um, all right, now is the part where I take you to a speed mode.
All right, let's turn her inside out and see what we got. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. Oh, and I'm just gonna take my pinky finger and poke out the corner of these. Now for the moment of truth. Can I put the pillow into it? And there we have it. Oh yeah, look at that. Can't even see my thread marks. Functioning zipper. I think this is the most high quality um, crochet home good decor object I have ever made. So let's go throw this bad boy on my couch. Okay, so there she is in our new home. Once again, this has been Knots by Lainey. I'm Lainey, and if you like this video, please hit that like button and subscribe for more content. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.